Well friends, the day has finally arrived. The new Fozzy Audio ZA3 amplifier is finally available for purchase. Now in this video, I am going to try and compare the ZA3 with two other Class D amplifiers, the Fozzy Audio V3 and the IEMA A07 Max. Now I already feel like I've bitten off way more than I can chew by trying to compare three Class D amplifiers in one video, but I really think this will help you decide which one is right for you. Let's start by comparing the power of each model that I have now. Now, if I'm going to compare all three of the amplifiers that I have, when we're talking power, it's important for me to tell you the power supplies that each manufacturer sent me rather than give you the max power ratings that each model can provide. Because we're comparing my three, not necessarily the max three, because the manufacturers don't always send me the highest power supply available. So, of the three units, I'm gonna go through real quick and explain to you each power supply and the rate uh, power rating I can get from each. Let's start with the Fozzy V3. Now that power supply is a 32 volt, five amps, which can give me 100 watts times two at four ohms. Now it's worth pointing out, there is no mono power with the V3, something we'll talk about a little bit later. The Fozzy ZA3, I was sent the 48 volt 5 amp power supply, and that's gonna provide 155 watts times two at four ohms in stereo, and 235 watts times one at four ohms for mono. Now for the IEMA A07 Max, I was sent the 36 volt 6 amp power supply, which gives me 107 watts at two times two at four ohms, and 190 watts times one at four ohms for mono. Now I wanna talk about how all three of these amplifiers sound later on in the video in comparison to one another, which is why I wanted to highlight the different power ratings that I have on hand. But what's also interesting is all three of these amplifiers use the exact same amp chips and op amps. They all use the Texas Instruments TPA3255 as the amp chip, and they all use the NE5532 op amp chip, all three of which can be swapped for the op amps. So what I'm curious is, since all of these have basically the same guts, is that going to mean they sound different? That's something that I wanna talk about a little later on. Now, one of the features that I think people are gonna really love with the ZA3, and it was something that was being requested of a lot, is that out of the three amplifiers, this is the only one whose volume knob can also control the volume on your subwoofer. Now, I use the V3 and the A07 Max with my sub, and it's annoying to have to dial in the volume on both every time you adjust it but not with the ZA3. It was super easy to connect to with that dedicated subwoofer output. And the volume has been easy to manage on both units through all my listening sessions. Okay, let's talk pricing between these three units because I was actually surprised the difference between all three. Now the A07 Max comes in at just $80. The V3 is $100 at list price. And I think it's currently on sale for $90. Now, this is where things get interesting because the uh, ZA3 actually has two price levels. The 32 volt power supply model comes in at $130, while the 48 volt power supply comes in at $140. Now, there's a few things to take into consideration when we're talking about price in comparison with these three amplifiers. Now, if you just want to get in the game at the best price possible, and you have no interest in using an amplifier as a monoblock, meaning one amp per speaker, then you could just get the V3 because it doesn't have the capability to be used as a monoblock. You can get in as cheap as possible and have a great sounding amplifier. However, if you want to buy two of each of these amplifiers, two of the other models, and use those as monoblocks, the A07 Max, even at list price, is $160 while the ZA3 is coming in at 260 for the 32 volt and 280 for the 48 volt. 
which means you're making a considerably larger investment for the ZA3s. However, you are getting extra benefits with the ZA3. For instance, you're getting XLRs. Now, if you're someone that has no interest in XLR, then you may just think, ah, I'm fine saving money and getting the AO7 Max. However, just keep in mind that the ZA3 is a wonderful user experience if you're using the subwoofer output with that volume control extending also down to the sub. Whereas if you are saving money and using the AO7 Max's mono box and you're using a sub, you're gonna have to still adjust that every time you're adjusting the volume as the volume knob on the AO7 Max does not extend down to the subwoofer. Now we've established some similarities and differences between the features and power with these three amplifiers, but now let's talk about sound. Do these three amplifiers sound different given the fact that they're all using the same amp chip and op amps? Now at this part of the video, I have to let down several viewers because I was not able to test these as mono blocks. And that's simply because IEMA and Fozzy didn't send me two units of each. And I think that's gonna actually be a common thing with anyone reviewing the ZA3. Unless someone thought ahead enough, not me, to ask for another review model. They only really sent out one of each. So I just wasn't able to make monoblock comparisons. So we're gonna stick with stereo comparisons here, but I still think it's pretty interesting about what I heard when listening to all three of these in stereo mode. Let me show you what I mean. Now it's important to note during this sound comparison, I first tried to do it with the subwoofer, which was nearly impossible because of the two amps that don't have the volume control for the sub, it was just nearly impossible to dial in every, to dial in each of those amps and their sub, get all the volume the same, and then still kind of be able to recall what I had just listened to when cycling through each amplifier. So I removed the sub from each of the amps and then began listening through, which starts, I started with the Fozzy Audio V3, and then I went with the AO7 Max and then the ZA3, and then I cycled back through all over again. I know what you're thinking, I need more friends. You're probably right. So what was I able to hear? Overall, I have enjoyed using the V3 amplifier. I think it's a great sounding amplifier for the price. But as I began to upgrade to the AO7 Max and then the ZA3, I started to hear things a little differently. And I can pretty much summarize it like this. The vocals get more forward with each amplifier. So the AO7 Max is a little more forward than the V3 and the ZA3 even a little bit more forward with the, than the AO7 Max. I found the ZA3 had the best sounding uh, guitars within these songs, especially the acoustic guitars. They came across really musical. Now, the bass is definitely there with the V3, even without the subwoofer. But what I could hear is just more musical bass. Like you could actually hear tones being played. And during free fall, and there's this kind of weird like part that I noticed with the AO7 Max that I didn't notice with the V3. And the ZA3 highlighted that sort of weird effect even more. Everything was just a little bit more detailed and focused with the ZA3 over all of the other amplifiers. And I just realized that at the beginning of this video, I was gonna try to give you advice on which one of these is the right fit for you, which is a big task considering three amplifiers all having different features and some different sound signatures. But let's just talk features because I think that's gonna be what determines these amps for a lot of people. For instance, if you want the best subwoofer experience, you gotta go with the ZA3. It just blows the other two out of the water. If you don't have a subwoofer and you have no interest in using any of these amps as mono box, you just want a stereo amplifier at a great price that sounds great, the Fozzy V3 is still tough to beat for that. If you're someone that wants to get affordable mono blocks and doesn't have a subwoofer or doesn't mind that if you pair the subwoofer with the AO7 Maxes that you're gonna have to adjust the volume on the sub and the AO7 Max amplifiers separately. If that doesn't bother you, then you can still get in with those at basically what you're gonna pay for one of the ZA3s. 
Now, if you're someone that's interested in XLR balanced amplifier, then you got to go with the ZA3 because it's the only one that's available. So I do think it comes down to features, but I am happy that Fozzy Audio seems to have taken a lot of feedback from the general public and what they want in one of these small class D amplifiers. Now, I'm not one for conspiracy theories, but it seems like they've got something going on here a little bit with IEMA. They came out with the V3 and then IEMA kind of came out with something very similar, but you could use it as a mono block. And then Fozzy was like, all right, all right, we see your mono block. We see it and we will raise you one with the ZA3 by adding XLR. And I think this competition is basically just going to give us as consumers more features, especially, I mean, these are features that I would not have guessed even a year ago when I first started reviewing some of these Class D amps that we would now have already. So it's kind of fun to see them going back and forth and just seeing what we as the consumer gets um, as part of that, what seems to sort of feel like a rivalry these days. You tell me, what do you think? Which one is the amplifier that you would choose now that you've got all three? I would love for you to leave me a, a note in the comments and just let me know which one is your preferred amplifier. Now we've been talking all about class D amps today and a lot about power. Now, what's interesting is earlier this year, I actually had a lot of fun with a low powered class AB amplifier and that was the shit Yola horn. And it really blew me away how much volume I could still get out of a 10 watt amp in my home stereo system. If you'd like to learn more about the shit Yolohorn amplifier, you can do so by watching this video here.